Tomorrow, Lyle and Eric Menendez are set to be seen and heard for the first time in years. The two brothers, who have been serving life sentences without possibility of parole for, their, for killing their parents, are set to appear virtually for a status hearing. Outgoing Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascones recommended the case be resentenced, which is a decision the next DA wants to review. Here to discuss is former federal prosecutor Nima Romani. Good to see you, sir. Um, I'm fascinated by this. Okay, this is these guys have been behind bars for 34 years, and you've got the Los Angeles outgoing district attorney saying we need to reopen up the sentencing, and it seems to be predicated largely on a documentary, a Netflix documentary that's gotten people's attention. That seems odd since this should be kind of a legal thing, I would think. Is this more about the popularity of the show or more about a real difference in legally how we should look at this? It is fascinating, and it's really the power of a Netflix series. We've seen it time and time again where a documentary can completely change the course of a legal case. Britney Spears was freed from her conservatorship largely because of a documentary. R. Kelly was finally brought to justice because of a documentary. Folks like Bob Durst, the documentary The Jinx, and Jeffries, the Abercrombie and Finch CEO, finally brought to justice because of a documentary. But the Netflix series Monsters has really shown a spotlight on the sexual abuse that the brothers suffered. And there's a lot of public support for their release. And we know that every prosecutor in this country is either elected or appointed by someone who is. So there are certainly politics at play here. Mm. The outgoing DA, George Gascon, said, I want to relook at the sentencing for this. Uh, he lost uh, the, the election for his seat. And we've got a new DA in Los Angeles who said, I will look at the case again. But he hasn't made any decisions or promises. Has there, has there been new evidence that's come to light that would perhaps change the new DA's view on the case and open up the possibility that the brothers could be granted parole? There's two key pieces of evidence, but they're certainly not new. They were included in a habeas petition filed last year. That is that Jose Menendez also abused an individual named Roy Rossello. He was a member of the Mexican boy band Menudo. And one of the brothers wrote a letter to his cousin detailing the abuse eight months before the murders. This was all included in a habeas petition filed in early 2023. Of course, right before the election, George Gascon decided to recommend resentencing. Of course, he lost. Now, it's really up to incoming District Attorney Nathan Hockman. The question is, is he going to honor that request? In his public statements during the election, he didn't take a position one way or another, nor has he since he has been District Attorney-elect. So tomorrow's status hearing is going to be really important. And the question is, our prosecutor is going to detail what mm. Hockman intends to do, because I think that's the key piece of evidence, because the resentencing hearing isn't until December 11th, and Hockman takes uh, office on December 2nd. You know, they're, get, they're doing a lottery system to give out tickets to watch this remote appearance by the Menendez brothers. I mean, does that surprise you that it's become such a spectacle? It doesn't. This is my hometown of Los Angeles, and this is probably the biggest case here since O.J. Simpson. There's a lot of support for Eric and Lyle being released. People want to be in that courtroom. There's only 16 seats available to the public and two standby seats. So there's going to be a long line outside of that courthouse tomorrow morning. It's unbelievable stuff. Nima, great analysis. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Brian.